video is going to be on, you guessed it, foreskin. Now I know that this is a controversial topic, but I am a controversial person. And if this makes you uncomfortable, then go ahead and feel free to stop watching this video now. It's just as simple as that. I'm not uncomfortable talking about foreskin and penises and sex. In fact, I taught a cyst a class of four to five hundred in a sex class. So I'm actually not uncomfortable speaking about anything related to sex, genitals, gender, things like that. So I'm not uncomfortable, but if you are, you might not want to watch this. I want to put a side note out there before I start this video. I am not calling mothers who circumcise their sons bad mothers. The reason I think a lot of people are still circumcising, actually not a lot, those numbers are falling, but we will get into that. The reason I think people are still circumcising is because of misinformation. Our parents circumcised all of us, or not all of us, but majority of us. I think it, my generation is somewhere in 70% of us were circumcised. Not, I mean, not us, I don't have a penis, but 70% of the males in my generation, I believe, were circumcised, 70 something. Because science said, hey, you need to circumcise those day boys, save them from the STDs and the UTIs and all that good stuff. So yes, our parents circumcised their sons. And I think that a lot of people are just doing what their parents did. I just think a lot of people haven't done research on it because they assume that it's just what we do. So I wanna get the word out there that it doesn't have to be what we do. And actually it's starting to not be what we do. All my brothers are circumcised and my husband is circumcised, but science has come out in the past few years with some changes. So I think it's time to change. But anyways, yeah, Foreskin's actually really cool and he's our friend. He does some pretty cool stuff. He protects the penis, he helps the penis in sexual activity. There's no bad that comes with the foreskin. Here's the thing that people argue with me a lot. Well, you have to pull it back and clean it and things can get in there and blah, blah, blah. I'm just gonna link some stuff below because fact of the matter is, when a baby is born, the foreskin is fused to the penis. It does not move. It should not move. If it's a healthy foreskin and the parent didn't rip it back or something like that, the foreskin is fused to the penis. We're gonna use my finger as a little baby penis example. It's fused to the penis until the boy is at least five, but usually starts to naturally retract around puberty. And I always have all these people saying, no, I've seen one and they move. It should not move. And you do not need to argue with me. You need to argue with like the American Academy of Pediatrics and all the doctors in the world. And the reason it's fused to the penis is to act as a protecting barrier between all of the good stuff, the good bacteria, all of the you know nerves from becoming desensitized and, and to keep all the bad stuff out. It's literally like a little protective helmet for your little baby boy's penis. It's protecting it. Don't take his protective blanket away. Now when the baby grows up and turns into a man and decides that he wants to engage in sexual activity, the foreskin acts as a natural lubricant. Fun fact, did you know that the foreskin has 240 feet? 240 feet worth of nerve fibers in it. That's just the foreskin. That's what they cut off and throw in the garbage. As well as 20 thousand nerve endings. Now, we're just throwing all that good feeling away. So since the foreskin seems to only have benefits to it so far and protects us, and not us, I don't have a penis, protects men and helps them out during sex, why is it that people are chopping it up and throwing it out like it's not a very important part of the man that he was born with because it provides a useful function? Well, here are some of the ones I hear a lot. Everybody does it. No, not true anymore. Actually, if you go around the world, they don't do it. This isn't a practiced ritual. Now, it said that about 71% of the American population is currently circumcised, but science just came out in, I think they released a retracting statement in 2000. Wow. I think that science started to come back before that, but the American Academy of Pediatrics released their statement saying that they cannot recommend circumcision in 2012. So yes, 71% of the American population is circumcised. Now, it is said that with babies today, babies being born right now, less than 55% are circumcising their sons. 
and that number is expected to keep dropping and that probably has something to do with like i said the american academy of pediatrics came out and said we don't recommend circumcision we it doesn't it doesn't do much it doesn't do much, really anything and people start doing their own research and the numbers are falling. So no, now everybody isn't doing it anymore. But when you're afraid that your son is gonna look different in the locker room, so you circumcise him, he's going to look different in the locker room because you circumcised him, because we're moving away from circumcision. There are going to be a lot more boys in that locker room when they're old enough to be in that locker room now that are not circumcised. It's about a 50-50, it's half and half. It's not the majority anymore. They're not gonna be the outcasts. You don't have to worry about it. Look at the numbers, look it up yourself. Now this next one I hear is like really creepy to me. I'm sorry, maybe it's just me, but it's creepy. People like to say, well, then he won't look like his dad. Like, what will he think? Like why he'll think him and his dad are different and some shit like that. Do you expect them to like be comparing penises? Let me tell you something about genitals, okay? And I don't know if I'm just more educated on this because I taught us this ex class, but if you didn't know this, I'm gonna fill you in. Genitals all look a lot different. They come in different shapes, different sizes, different colors. The odds are that his penis is gonna look different than his dad's. I mean, I've never seen, I'm sure I've seen it at some point, but I don't remember ever seeing my mother's vagina. Couldn't tell you what it looks like, but could guarantee you it looks different than mine. And that doesn't make me a freak. That just makes me normal because everybody's genitals look different than everybody else's. Like, why is that even used in defense? Can we just throw that excuse away of why you're circumcising your kid because you want him and his dad's dick to look the same? I don't understand it. I'm sorry. I can't even stand by with that one. I am judging you if you come to me and tell me you want your son's dick to look like his daddy's dick. Another one I hear a lot is it's easier and cleaner to take care of. Well, actually, and I'm sure a lot of hospitals will say this, but I'm going to use one in particular just to cite because you know people like to say a lot, but they don't like to actually have any credit behind what they're saying. I will use the Children's Hospital of St. Louis. The Children's Hospital of St. Louis has said that it's actually way more complicated to take care of a circumcised penis than it is to take care of an uncircumcised penis. Why is that? Because an uncircumcised penis is just like a finger. You just clean it off. You just wipe it clean. You don't need to pull anything back. We've already gone through that. It shouldn't be moving. We're gonna pretend I didn't do that. But anyways, it, I'm, I'm trying to, it shouldn't move. It should just be fused. So you just clean it like a finger. Now let's get into the uncircumcised penis. It's been cut up. It's now a wound. It needs to heal. You have to be careful cleaning it. You have to be careful with what you put on it. You have to make sure you put ointment on it. It can get stuck to the diaper, which can cause infection because they pee in the diaper. Babies have like poop outbursts. I mean, I don't know if you've ever seen an explosive baby diaper, but it's all over their balls, all over the penis, and now it's all over their new cut open baby penis. Now let's talk when they get a little older, because this seems to be an issue with how they know how to clean it. And people act like it's like this jigsaw puzzle that the kid has to put together every time they need to clean their penis. You sit your kid down, you have a conversation with your kid. Take your penis, pull the skin back, put some water on it, let the skin go. How to clean an uncircumcised penis 101. You're welcome. There are all these things now that are opening up the baby to infection and 1% of babies who are circumcised have to end up having their penis amputated due to an infection that the baby might have got because the penis stuck to a pee-filled diaper or a poop got on it or something, bacteria, bad bacteria got in because it didn't have its little comfort blankie and it leads to them literally losing their penis. Now you might say a 1% chance, that's a very small chance and it is, but it's an unnecessary risk. Like it's an unnecessary 1% of risk that you're taking. After my research, I found that it's not uncommon for babies to actually have to go have another circumcision or a corrective circumcision because the first time around it just doesn't get done right. And it's been shown that the scarring from the circumcision can lead to desensitizing the area of the penis so the man doesn't enjoy sex as much for the rest of his life because wherever that scar tissue is, that's the place on the penis he has lost his nerve feeling. Now my favorite overall reason people use for circumcising their baby boys is 
for their health. It was thought that circumcising baby boys kept them clean and healthy, protected them from UTIs and STDs, but guess what? We have come out and said that that's not actually the case. In 2012, the American Academy of Pediatrics came out and said that they cannot recommend circumcision because the benefits of it are so modest that they, they don't recommend it. The only difference between a circumcised penis and an uncircumcised penis is that uncircumcised penis is a little more likely to get a UTI. And in their same release statement said that however, a even a uncircumcised boy only has a 1% chance, 1% of getting a UTI that can be curable with antibiotics. Of course, every mother has to make the decision that they think is best for their son. My point of this video is I hope that it leads to more mothers doing more research. And do not just Google this. Go to credible sources, please. Look up medical journals. Look up medical sites. Go to children's hospital websites and see what they say about circumcision. Don't Google and go look on some like message board and because Joe Smo said that circumcision is the best way to go, now you circumcise your child. My own personal thoughts on the matter, and this is not to judge anybody, at the point where the Academy of Pediatrics came out and said, hey, we don't recommend it, I feel like from there on it became an elective cosmetic procedure that we are doing because there's no other benefit other than you want your child's penis to look a certain way. So I think that that's kind of what I hope people think about in a deeper sense. Really kind of think of the reasons that they may be doing this or may want to do this. Times have changed, science has evolved, and that's just my take on the matter and why I do not believe in circumcision. If you're not subscribed to my channel, go ahead and subscribe and you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram if you're not. As always, thank you for watching and stay educated.